G'day, Pat Callanan here. I really love Melbourne, home of some fine entertainment and some outstanding coffee on just about every corner. But it's my humble belief that us humans, we weren't designed to live in this cityscape full of traffic. We were designed to explore nature and the bush. So on today's adventure, we're taking you out of the crowded streets to explore some of Victoria's best 4x4 tracks. And they're all within an hour's drive of Melbourne. My partner in crime is four-wheel drive fanatic and photojournalist Scotty Mason. He's driving our Amarok four-cylinder turbo diesel crew car and is on assignment to capture some great action shots for our magazines and online publications, which shouldn't be a problem where we're going. There'll be bog holes, rock slides, impossible inclines and a few dramas to cap off the fun. The four regions we're exploring create an arc north of the metropolitan area. They include the Yarra State Forest, Talangi, Mount Disappointment and of course the Lerdadurg and Wombat State Forests. Now in order to zip out and do day trips to each of our chosen regions, Scotty and I are setting up a base camp near Hillsville on the Yarra River. This campsite has all the luxuries of home. It's the perfect location for a couple of old blokes to recover after a hard day's driving. And so to our first destination. And it's one of Melbourne's favourite and most accessible 4x4 playgrounds, Mount Disappointment. It's been a while since I have driven through these hills, but one thing I recall is the fact that these are fantastic beginner's tracks. They have a good, firm, rocky base most of the time. Although, beware after wet weather, they can get a bit slippery and slidey. But generally speaking, this is a great place to come just to experiment with the four-wheel drive systems in your vehicle. The main roads through here are in fantastic condition, which is not exactly what we want. We want something a bit more challenging. Be careful what you wish for. No sooner had we left an easy track and we find ourselves up a very scrabbly, super steep hill that has Scotty and I struggling to get to the top. Ooh. There he goes. He's lost forward momentum. Got a little big hole there. This is pretty serious stuff. Back end of his car just went boom. Might have to break out the winch. More mumbo. Front wheel lift. Plenty of dust spinning. He's all right. Be aware, folks, Mount Disappointment has a million tracks of all shapes and sizes that can easily take you where you weren't expecting to go. But chances are you'll have a whole lot of fun getting there. Now we are coming down to a slightly more rocky section of the track. Getting a little bit more difficult. Ooh, and as I'm spying up ahead, I think it might be time to jump out and assess what we have ahead of us. Now, folks, there's a really great reason why we actually get out of our four-wheel drive because there's only so much you can see when the track is at kind of at eye level. It's a great idea to get out because then we can start to see the consistency of the track, how loose are those rocks. And there's a few other things that we can spy up here as well, folks. <laughs> Bumper bar from some vehicle over here. Witness marks on the rock face. This is pretty interesting. Just um, bring it up a little bit to here, Scotty and uh, we might um, have a bit of a closer look as I uh, guide you on through, mate. We're going to show two different ways of attacking the hill. Now, over here, you can see these witness marks with the tyres, and you can see where people have slipped and slid down here. So this is a line that people have taken. Personally, I think it's the wrong line. Reason being is you've got a low point here, big high point in the middle, and another low point just up here. So this, as a four-wheel drive, you've always got to think about where your tyres actually go and about the ramp over angle of your four-wheel drive. So that's the bit in the middle, the shallow bit in the middle, I suppose I should say. We're going to do it and we'll see how we go. Bring her on up um, nice and gently and we'll see if we can uh, make it up there on that right-hand line. Let's do it. That's it, that's a good line, mate, coming up to the rock face now. Wow, we've got a tire up. We're actually doing all right, but take it easy now. 
because you're gonna run out of clearance pretty soon. <laughs> you can just see there how he's run out of traction at the bottom of the hill. Just hold there, Scotty. <laughs> And if you can check down at this tire here, there's plenty of air under there. That's not what you want to do. So we're going to try the line over this side. We're going to stick hard up to the trees and try and keep those tires on the ground. And we'll see how we go then. Uh, beautifully driven, mate. She's a challenging hill there, dragging that canopy up, but um, really well driven, nice and smooth. And that's what it's yeah, all about, folks. Nice and smooth on the throttle, and uh, no worries at all. Let the technology do the work for you. He's got a point, folks. <laughs> now it is my turn. Off we go. There's not a lot of traction floating around here, so I'm going to try and hug these trees. Here I come up the rock face. And up we go. A little bit of a scrape. Sometimes, folks, as much as we do want to keep our tyres on the ground all the time, we can't always do that. But that's okay. The more you go four wheel driving, the more used you get to having your tyres off the ground, and the more you find that. As long as three are on the ground and one's off, you are A-OK. -okay. The tracks we're going to explore today are in the Lerdederg State Park and Wombat State Forest. This area is known as a challenging four-wheel drive playground with steep rocky tracks left over from the days of logging. But first, it's brekkie time. So we're going to knock up my special campfire baked beans recipe. This recipe transforms humble baked beans into an instant classic. And the idea here is to just get them a little bit crispy on the outside. And it begins with two tins of cannellini beans into olive oil. And now for the alchemy, starting with good old Tommy sauce. Then some Worcestershire. You can't go wrong with this stuff. Another decent squirt of the old HP sauce. A little bit more sweetness. We'll chuck in some honey. And then what I reckon is the ingredient that actually makes this absolutely sing, the hot English mustard. So one rather generous teaspoon of this will transform this dish from being rather average to rather awesome. Throw in a tin of crushed tomatoes and gently stir. Then put to one side so you can cook up some eggs in a nest. So this is where you get your bread and instead of uh, actually using the egg ring in which the way it was intended, we actually use it to cut out a nice little nest. The nests go into your oil. And now for the eggs. Now it is pretty much just cooking the eggs the way you like them. So there you have it, folks. Only about 10 or 15 minutes to cook, but it will power us through the entire day, I can guarantee it. And so we're off to explore another one of Melbourne's best tracks. This time we're heading into Lerdederg State Park, and our starting point is the stunning little town of Blackwood. Remember this oh, town, God. folks. It's off the beaten track and one of those places where you are instantly welcomed and made to feel right at home. And if you ask nicely, they'll tell you where to find the best tracks, campsites and hidden treasures. There are mine shafts galore in these hills around Blackwood and many of them, like this one, have fallen in. Now, they didn't leave the gold mining here because they couldn't find gold because there was reasonable amounts of it. The problem was water. Too much of the stuff flooded the mine shafts and they simply couldn't pump it out fast enough. So the area turned to logging. But just imagine what it was like back then. These hills would have been crawling with a huge mix of colourful characters, all struggling desperately to strike it rich or to just survive, including Captain Moonlight, who, before becoming a bushranger, was the Anglican minister at the Blackwood Church. 
And a quick story here about Moonlight. Apparently, he was our first gay bush ranger. He wore a wedding ring made from his gay lover's hair. And before they hanged him, he requested to be buried beside him. The way they used to extract the gold is they would grab big chunks of quartz and they would run them through a machine called a stamper, which would crush these rocks. And in that process, separate the gold from the useless rock. Many believe there's still plenty of gold to be found in these hills. And these granite hills made for some pretty challenging rock climbs. Ooh, this looks interesting, Scotty. Billet track, mate. Ever heard of that one? I haven't, and the boys didn't uh, mention it either, mate. What's it look like? She's um, pretty rough and rocky, mate. Looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> Can we have a go, please, please, please? But you don't need to um, twist my arm. I'm in for it. Aha, this is classic rock driving, folks. Absolutely love it. First step, make sure everything is locked and loaded. If you have a rear differential lock, you need to throw it in right about now as he pumps and grinds up the track. Because you want every bit of traction you can find and sometimes, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to reverse and try this again. Oh, crunch. So the reason why we drive nice and slow up these tracks is because rock does not move, my friends, and you really want to make sure that if you do come into a collision with something, that uh, it is at a very, very slow speed. So I'm going to try this again and let us see how we go. Always take a different line if at first you do not succeed. So I'm heading hard up to the right hand side, trying to keep those tires close to the bank and you can see just how much smoother it is. So that is now a doddle because I've taken the right line up there. I promise I was just trying to show you the difference between the right and the wrong line. Kinda wanna have a look at Scotty coming up there now. a four-wheel drive doing what it was supposed to do, what they were intended to do from the factory. When you see those tyres slipping, gripping over the rocks on a track, it's just as fun being a spectator as it is actually driving the thing, in my opinion. locals told us about another great track, but there's a problem. Well, I've got to say, I'm not real happy, folks. We were given the goss on this track and we're told it was an awesome, challenging four-wheel drive track and we were so looking forward to it. And what do we come to here? A locked gate and management vehicles and walkers only. I mean, seriously. What more damage is my lowered tyres on my Amarok going to do compared to a Parks vehicle on the very same track? And have a look down that track. You can already see the fact that it is starting to overgrow. And that's going to make it even harder to access in times of fire. And the fact that they shut this area off, which is our area, this is our country, folks. <laughs> this is not the Parks. The Parks don't actually own it. They manage it. But their form of management seems to be to put these gates up and lock us out. Returning to Melbourne's best tracks, and this time we're heading over to the Yarra State Forest, where it has been raining at last. Melburnians, you are so damn lucky. We are just 83 kilometres from the Melbourne CBD yet we are 1,000 metres above sea level already. And that sort of elevation creates this magnificent scenery. We have massive tree ferns, we've got giant mountain ash, and all the while we are cosseted in this gorgeous mist. 
and we haven't even hit the full drive tracks yet. Just before we hit the tracks, I want to make a quick stopover at the Cement Creek Plantation. Not too many people have even heard of this place, but what you're looking at is a magnificent plantation of California redwood, which is a type of sequoia that is native to America. But I'll tell you, I can't think of too many places that are more insta-worthy than this joint. Now, this plantation was laid down around the 1930s because this area was overlogged and it was pretty devastated by bushfires. So the Victorian Board of Works decided they would run an experiment to see how these other species of trees would survive. And all these years later, this place is considered pretty special because it is now listed on the National Trust. The symmetry is what appeals to both insta-snappers and photographers alike. And there's something about a giant pine forest that brings out the child in me. We have finally arrived in 4x4 country, folks. And it's always nice to have a point to your 4x4 journey. And the point of this one is to go to a pretty cool little hotel that has a rather uniquely Australian story. We are heading to the Riften Hotel. Interesting thing about this hotel is that it used to be out in the gold fields. Now, when the gold ran out, they thought, well, this is a perfectly good hotel. We're gonna move it into town. Problem was, is they got to the river and they thought, geez, this is gonna be a little bit challenging to cross. So they thought, bugger it, we'll just leave it here. And there it lies till today. <laughs> Fantastic, very Australian story, I think you'll agree. Now, we're not exactly going the direct route, as four-wheel drivers, we all like to go the road less travelled and we are about to tackle the Britannia track. But I better dump some air before we hit it. So you're going to have an advantage over me, mate. You're running muddies and you're running 15 pounds. And I'm running all terrains and 22, mate. So this could be a good comparison. Well, Britannia track, folks, is clay. And when clay is wet, clay is damn slippery. So I'm slightly concerned about this track because I've kind of written off a car in the clay before. So I've got the tire pressures low and I'm just trying to gently make it up the hill with not too much slippage and just get to the top of these little whoop de doos <laughs> And still we climb and still we have traction. So folks, why I worry about these hills is because a slippery hill, you can get traction, 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 then no traction. Now what happens then? Well, then gravity takes over and you end up going backwards down the hill, often sideways. So you've got to rapidly pop it into reverse and then start trying to get some vision through your mirrors and see your way back down the hill. Now that is freakishly scary having done it quite a few times. It's not a pretty sight. If you're lucky, you will land over on the side of the track and that might pull you up. You can even do the famous emergency brake and steer it into the bank. Your insurer will not like it. <laughs> you will not like it, but it will stop your vehicle. Now, in this case, I can't really use a different line. So what I'm going to do is use my rear locker, which I didn't have on last time, and also try and get a wee little bit more momentum. Okay, let's give this another go. My treads are well and truly caked. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I'm going to get over this. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Yes, 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 yes. Aha, we have done it, folks. Woo! This hill is sketchy. Scotty, uh, this is a uh, little bit of a challenge, mate, but a really good one. I forgot to put the locker in there for a little section, and uh, you'll see where I got stuck there. It is important to note that, yeah, sticking in the ruts on stuff like this is generally the safe bet, isn't it, mate? Yes, couldn't agree more, mate. But I think with your muddies and your driving expertise, you won't make my, my mistakes. <laughs> no worries, mate. Hopefully you haven't chewed it up too much for me. <laughs> the blame game has already started. No, 
no worries at all. Try and high side this. I did a little bit of a cheat. <laughs> I high sided. Ah, uh, fair enough. Fair enough. We've decided to take the long way round to the Reefton Hotel near Warburton, but here on Britannia Track, we've bitten off a little more than we expected. It's been raining, and as we reach the halfway mark, the clay and granite hills are getting very steep and extremely slippery. OK, stage two of the hill. Let's see how this goes. She is a slippery little sucker. And I'm going to take the left-hand line, stay in the train tracks. I have run out of traction, eh? OK, now it's backing down. OK, rightio, here we go. Give this another crack. And I can barely even get off the mark here, folks. This is how little traction is here. Spinning the tyres up, getting a bit of momentum. Here we go, here we go. Captain Crunch. Boy, oh boy. Well, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> we did all right, but we didn't do well enough. It's the hill that keeps on giving, folks. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Right. This is so fun. One of the challenges about modern four-wheel drives is their traction control in certain situations like this. There is not a lot of traction to be had, and so the computers can only work so fast. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to activate the rear differential lock, and I am actually going to turn my traction control off. Why do I do that? because that's going to give me maximum power to those wheels without braking. I felt then that I, if I had a bit more momentum, I could have got up just over that lip. No traction control on. And let's see how we can leap up this hill. Already I can feel more momentum. Ah, got a little bit further, but it didn't seem to make the difference that I had intended. Funny though, these tracks, each time you claw a little bit further up, you kind of feel a bit more hopeful. I'm running all-terrain tyres, which are good for most situations, but this clay, it's like ice. Seriously, folks, so I'm going to have to find a little bit of extra traction that will hopefully get me over the lip. I'll give this one last crack. And see how we go. Oh, I could feel the traction. <laughs> we used them and we spat them out, folks. A little bit too much for it now. Okay, so now it's Scotty's turn. He's running mud terrains, which will have seriously good grip, but in the end, it'll come down to the line and momentum. And previous drivers have dug these train tracks pretty deep. Made ice. Nearly. Scotty needs to go high and stay there. Let's gear again. Oh, Scotty just smashed the back left wheel into a rock. All that extra weight crashing down on two inches of semi-deflated rubber, something had to give. You can tell it's not his car, folks, can't you? The way he drives this thing, like he stole it. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to do a tip. Yeah, you did. So I did this purely for the viewers at home. How to fix a tyre on the run, briefly the bead. <laughs> Before we pull out the spare, let's see if we can reinflate. Alrighty. We can't use a jack on this kind of slope, so Scotty has to get the truck back across the ruts, then reverse down onto flatter land. Not easy, folks, believe me. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. 
Just keep it coming. Woo! He's done it. <laughs> That's a sad looking fire on there, but it's still holding on. We did it. Not easy, but we've done it. Okay guys, so we're just going to uh, grab my compressor out of the back. We're going to try and uh, jack it up so we can just lift a bit of weight off that tyre. It's really important that Scotty cleans away every bit of mud so the tyre bead can form a solid seal with the rim. And while he does that, I'll get the hydraulic jack into action. Scotty's digging around the tyre because if we lift this vehicle up any further, it is likely to topple. We're on an angle, we're on the side of a hill, and as much as we've tried to chop those wheels, she's still slipping backwards just a little bit. Now, that happens, if we were to jack it up any further, it gets more unstable. You get your fingers between the tyre and the rim there, the vehicle drops down, say goodbye fingers. So we're mitigating risk, folks, and that's what it's all about. Now, the big test, will they reseal? Riften Hotel beckons, my friends. <laughs> Welcome to Victoria, folks, the home of the 4x4 Slippery Dip. And after a day in the mud and rain, there is nothing quite like a warm pub with friendly locals and a cold beer. And if you thought we were hungry, check out this food. Seriously, what a way to end the day. That's good, appreciate it. That looks outstanding. Back now to Melbourne's best 4x4 tracks, and this time Scotty and I are taking the Amarox into Tulangi State Forest. The plan is to climb Rocky Track in search of a nice campsite, then tomorrow the Vic Range Track will take us home. But only if we make it through the bog holes. But first, let's head off the Melbourne Highway and do some rock climbing. And this is the sort of track that you drive when you kind of want to challenge yourself and challenge your skills as a four-wheel driver. And you can just see all these holes where people have tried and dug holes and failed. Possibly people without the benefits of uh, differential locks or traction control, but they've dug some big holes because I think they've been running bigger rubber than me. If you are new to the four-wheel drive world, you would be having an absolute blast like I am at the moment because you can really feel your vehicle having to work hard. And just then, we have what we know as a traction deficit in my vehicle. So let's back off and try a slightly different line. Now, while I look for a less damaging line up this rock run, Scotty is grabbing more action shots for our magazine. And the key with these sort of shots is to get the trees in the centre of the frame uh, vertical. So that way you show the true um, sort of steepness or gradient of the track. But uh, here we go. He's already caught some cracking images of the trip so far. And if you'd like to see more of Scotty's work, or indeed a truckload of great 4x4 and caravanning content from our entire team of talented photojournalists, pop onto our website and subscribe to Australia's most popular 4x4 online magazines, Unsealed 4x4 and RV Daily. It won't cost you a cent, and every week, new stories will be posted to your inbox with news, features, road tests and tips guaranteed to inspire and prepare you for your next adventure. But right now, it's back to mine. Try a slightly different line. <laughs> Captain Crunch. 
Man, this is just so hard on the vehicle. Just bumping and grinding its way up the track. We've lowered our tyre pressure, so we're getting a reasonable amount of traction, but it is just a slip and slide central. We're working hard, folks. Very hard. Wow, and there are some epic holes further up. The 21-year-old in me would have said, bloody oath, let's give it a crack. <laughs> but uh, the 40-plus-year-old in me says, actually, yeah, that's all right. We'll do the other way. Scotty brings the crew car up rocky track, and we both happily take an easy track off to the right. Meanwhile, a couple of young guns smash their trucks up and over. leaving us old codgers to cruise along Vic Range Road, where I'm told we'll find plenty of good camping spots. And this is the beauty of state forests as opposed to national parks. You can camp pretty much wherever you like, provided you stick to their regulations, you know, fire safety and all that sort of stuff. You can basically just enjoy that park and feel the freedom that we actually love as Aussies. Sure enough, as the sun sets, we find a beautiful spot beside a bevy of big old gum trees. And Scotty goes about building a campfire in a way most campers have probably never seen before. In the past, we're taught to build a little teepee and build it up from there. And this is a bit different because what we're creating is this nice airflow underneath. So you can see already, we've got a nice fire and that's helped out by the airflow underneath. As you can see, in a matter of moments, we've got an awesome fire. Not only that, I'm gonna get this beautiful bed of coals to cook on so much quicker than the traditional fire making method. Early next day, we wake up to the promise of rain. And out here, that means slippery mud and more than likely, big bog holes. Now it's important to distinguish the difference between the Vic Range Road and the Vic Range Track. The road is a very good road. The track is a very bad track. <laughs> Jeez, slipping, sliding, loving it. <laughs> That's fun. I feel like my car's got rear steer and it's only because the back end is spinning. Important tip for beginners, folks, in these sort of conditions. The temptation is, as you slide, you stomp on the brakes. That stomping on the brakes is a virtual guarantee that you will hit a tree. So you want to let those tyres roll because while they are rolling, you may be able to steer. While they're not rolling, bad luck. You're going to steer where gravity takes you. Back now to the celebration of mud that is the Vic Range track in Tulangi. And this is the last leg of our Melbourne adventure, folks. Tonight, we head home. Well, that's if we don't get stuck in the mud, that is. This is a pretty track. Pretty tight, pretty tough, pretty gnarly. <laughs> now we just accelerate out, hoping that we will stay on the track and not land in the ditch. There goes the back end. And then this, a nice big bog hole. Okay, this is getting a bit sketchy now. Oh, this looks interesting, Scotty. Certainly does. What have you got us into, mate? Oh man, that's cool as. Looks like we've got some dirt bikers uh, having a crack. How's it going? Yeah, good, how are you? Alright. How is it down the road? Uh, it drops off, it gets worse. Yeah, yeah. but big bog holes. Is it? Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, there's one more bike coming too. It's a pretty good indication when dirt bikes can't get traction. There's a certain heart in the mouth moment when you slide down a hill and you let the mud do the talking. And I'm sliding, I have no control. <laughs> but I'm at the bottom. <laughs> 
Didn't expect I'd ever see that armor off around there. Oh, no way. Then I get bogged. That's not fair. <laughs> Okay, try again. This time with gusto. Yes, that's it. You looked after me, dear track. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> oh, that is mad. <laughs> that was exciting. <laughs> oh dear. And the track just kind of gets worse. Wow. This is interesting. Oh, this is so tight. And we are almost home free. She's going to be tight, this one. OK, Scotty's turn. And right now, I am really worrying about my new crew car. Slightly concerned about Scotty's truck because he's a little bit longer than mine in the canopy. And it's a beautiful new Camp King canopy. And I don't want to get it scratched, so I'm going to stand guard on this tree and um, hope and pray and maybe do a little bit of pushing. Mirror's going to touch. No, it won't. Just letting you know I'm on the handheld, mate, if you need any help, guidance. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. Tread Pro. The plan is to throw the Tread Pro just in front of that tyre and hopefully that'll give it enough traction to get out of there because we can't really go backwards because we risk damaging this beautiful canopy. Okay. We're good, Scotty. That's it mate, nice and gentle, nice and gentle. Okay, it's just starting to grab the back track. Now we're going to do up, beautiful, and we're going to have almost clear to three. Phew! <laughs> That's what you call close quarters battle. <laughs> I absolutely love this sort of four-wheel driving. It is so tight. You are millimetres from the edge at the entire time. You're not always in control, which is kind of cool as well. But you're always on the button as you're going through here. And this forest is gorgeous. The colours, the red clay, the beautiful big mountain ash. This is a cool track. You want to do it. If you are stuck in the daily grind and you want to regain some sanity, it's nice to know, dear Melbourne, that it is right on your doorstep. Literally one to two hours and you are in the middle of an absolute 4x4 paradise. I'm Pat Callanan and until next time, keep the shiny side up. You won't want to miss next time as Wes and I show you Sydney's best 4x4 tracks with amazing free camps and spectacular scenery, it's an incredible adventure.